Stadium in Miami, the Marlins and the Padres. The Marlins lineup brought to you by Toyota, Hanley Ramirez, Jeremy Hermida, yes, Miguel Cabrera in the three spot. Mike Jacobs up in the cleanup position. Josh Willingham hits fifth, Dan Ugla, Miguel Olivo, Reggie Abercrombie, and Sergio Mitre in the nine spot. 39-year-old veteran Woody Williams gets ready to work an assortment of pitches he's not overpowering. Into right center field, base hit, into the alley, all the way to the wall. Run Hanley, there he goes. He's got himself a triple. Yeah, welcome him to South Florida. And the Marlins are in business. Rich, I think he already likes the spaciousness of this ballpark. We've seen an aggressive hitter in Hanley Ramirez. He jumps on that first pitch fastball from Woody Williams and then finds that right center field gap. We saw him on the road trip take pitches to right field, down the left field line, and use the entire field. We also saw on the road trip, at times, the Marlins' inability to score early when they got runners in scoring position. They'll have a chance here with Hermida, Cabrera, and Jacobs. Williams. Don't let the 250 average without an RBI fool you with Hermida. If you talk to Joe Girardi, he will rave about the at bats that Hermida has had this week. He's hit some balls hard, he's hit balls at people. And I think we will see as, as Jeremy Hermida grows as a major leaguer. We'll see him in certain situations become a little more aggressive. Wow. Woody Williams did not think that pitch missed at all. Tried to get the frame job from Mike Piazza. Got him on a 2 2 breaking ball. So Williams strikes out Hermida, and now here is Cabrera. A lively crowd electrified by the triple from Hanley Ramirez. Miguel Cabrera stands in. And right now the uh, Padres, because it's in the first inning, they're giving the Marlins this run. The infield is way back. Any ground ball will bring home Hanley Ramirez. And Miguel Cabrera went after a fastball. Williams doesn't throw as hard as he used to throw. 13 years in the Blue Jay organization. Three seasons in San Diego, then three and a half seasons with the Cardinals, and now he's back with the Padres. Came back in 2004. He had a nice run with St. Louis, especially at the end. In, in 2003, he was 18 and 9. He had a good playoffs until he got to game one of the World Series that year and the Red Sox hammered him and of course there never was another start there never was a game five the Red Sox swept the Cardinals the one one. I think as you watch him you'll see how he works the inside part of the plate. He'll cut his fastball move it away to right he's in on lefties and then we saw the big slow curveball pitch that he struck Jeremy Hermit out on. Ramirez at third, the 2 1. While not intentionally passing Cabrera, Bruce Bochi has made sure that Woody Williams is very cautious with him. And so a 3 1 fastball isn't automatic. And it was a breaking ball, and it was outside. Once again, we'll check in on the defense brought to you by Rico. The 
San Diego Padres. There's Mike Piazza, 377 home runs as a catcher. Overall, Piazza with 398 home runs. He'll be behind the plate. Look for the Marlins to run. Adrian Gonzalez, Josh Barfield, Khalil Green, and Vinny Castilla around the infield. Tramel Sledge, Dave Roberts, and Brian Giles in that outfield. And a big at bat for young Mike Jacobs now. You saw Ramirez over there at third. Cabrera joins him at first. And Jacobs has responded. Two home runs on the road trip, including a 420 footer at his old home, Shea Stadium. I think we saw a little bit of what we were talking about, what teams might elect to do to Miguel Cabrera in that situation. They didn't walk him intentionally, but clearly Woody Williams didn't give in either. Big swing. And it's one ball and one strike. The Padres changing the complexion of their team a bit. Ramirez opened with a triple. After Hermita struck out, Cabrera has walked. A lot of familiar faces left San Diego. And some new faces and some old veterans have joined this team. Jacobs laid on the fastball, and suddenly it's one and two. Now they're giving an opportunity. Adrian Gonzalez getting a chance to play at first base with Klesko on the disabled list. Josh Barfield, the youngster at second, so a very young right side of the infield. There's the former Marlin first round pick of 2000. Went to the Expos, then to Texas. There's Barfield. Josh made the club out of spring training. Jacobs lays off, and the count's two and two. That's the youth. If you want veterans, you can mix in a Mike Piazza and Vinny Castilla. And a Dave Roberts. Woody Williams. Cabrera is running, and Jacobs pops it up. Castilla is going to have to battle the wind, and he makes the play. Cabrera has to retreat to first. These are the situations that have really hurt the Marlins, especially on this last road trip. Trying to get that run in, look for that key hit. Joe Girardi said it himself. The club's one and four. Lost three one-run games very easily with a, a hit here or there. Could have won two or three ball games. So now Willingham, who has delivered this season, Couple homers and drove in six on the road trip. Many thought he would be behind the plate starting a catcher in this ball game. But he finds himself out in left field. Olivo gets the start. A strike. I think you have a lot of excited guys down there on the field. And then you have the coolness of the 14 year veteran Woody Williams. Marlins faced a guy similar to this when they saw Steve Traxel up in New York. If they were left handed you would call them crafty. Yeah the difference is Woody works a lot quicker than Traxel. Yes. <laughs> but throws just about as hard. His fastball topping out in the high 80s. A little bit of a cut to that one. It yeah, was that's 85. That's that cut fastball. Then he'll move to the outside part of the plate. And in contrast to Traxel, Traxel will use that fork ball. Woody Williams has to change up in the slow curve. One and two to Willingham. We're just underway. Marlins and Padres. Runners at the corners. Gonzalez holding Cabrera with Ramirez at third. And Piazza has to go down and block 
that breaking ball. How many times do you think he's done that in his career? One of the things that we've talked about over Mike Piazza's long career, he, he gets a bad rap in throwing runners out, but as far as calling a game and blocking pitches, he's excellent at that. And a man who, in all likelihood, is headed to Cooperstown, probably on that first ballot. Hammered into left field, base hit. And Willingham delivers again. And the Marlins have a run here in the first. And you said it right, Rich. You said hammered. And that's his nickname, Hammer. That ball was scalded. And you can't believe how big two out base hits are that drive in runs. When it looked like Woody Williams might get out of a jam, the curveball is, as you said, hammered into left field by Josh Willingham. Willingham had a big two out hit in New York, a double, a two run double in Sunday's ball game. All right, here's Dan Ugla. I think home openers are special for some players. Oh, a cross up right there. Yeah. Piazza's on his way out to talk to Williams. Piazza looking for something else was able to react. He was setting up outside. Reacted, was able to handle the pitch that actually tailed inside and was a strike. Ugla returned from the road trip. As you see, Willingham. And Cabrera with two down and got to hold his newborn son for the first time. As soon as he stepped off the plane. And so this home opener has a little extra special feel for Ugla. O2. Joe Girardi on a breezy day at Dolphin Stadium. His ball club has provided a run. Ugla trying to add to it. The Marlins missing the uh, Padres ace in this series, Jake Peavy. And the San Diego papers trumpeting the fact that the Padres missed the Marlins ace, Dontro Willis. In the air behind first, the rookie Gonzalez drops it. Well, you saw Adrian Gonzalez not only battling the sun, but also the wind. And We'll talk about that as this game goes on. It swirls a lot down on the field. We can look up at the flag and see them blowing, but you don't know exactly how it's blowing down on the field. And that ball just kept coming toward the stands. The key for a first baseman or a third baseman, get over to the stands first. Then you can react. He kind of drifted with it and wasn't able to catch it. A good way to contrast that is the way Castilla went after his ball, the veteran at third base. The one two again. Ugla had a big spring training with the bat and a huge year last year at double A. He is a rule five draft pick. The Marlins snatching him from the Diamondbacks organization. Out into shallow right. Gonzalez is out there with Barfield, and Barfield makes the catch. Home opener. How do you start a home opener? With a Hanley Ramirez triple. That's how the Marlins get that run across with Josh Willingham. It's one nothing. Come here, guys. Look at our field. We can't play here. 
We can fix this. This spring, kids have the power to revitalize their baseball field and make a real difference in their community. Now through April 30th, kids can nominate their field at RiggsDiamondsInTheRough.com. The grand prize is a $20,000 makeover and a baseball clinic hosted by Hall of Famers Lou Brock and Carlton Fisk. Briggs and Stratton, the power within. places we fly around the world, we know one means more to you than any other. We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. Not all the energy for our fuel comes from oil on the ground. A lot of it comes from our people who year in and year out put so much of their energy into everything they do. So you can be sure that when you put Valero gas into your tank, you're going to get a lot out of it. Valero, the energy to take you anywhere. FSN has your Marlins covered all season long. Got him! See the up and coming young Marlins heat up the National League. Padres and Marlins, tomorrow at 12.30 on FSN. It's 1-0 Marlins, top of the second inning. Dolphin Stadium. The home opener, and here is Piazza. Sergio Mitre worked to 1-2-3 first. A Dodger, a Marlin for a week, a Met, and now a Padre. It's a foul ball, but that either hit Piazza in the that looked pretty darn fair, and Piazza doubled back. Here's a look at it. It sure did. Chris Pochi looks in disbelief. Now it was foul, but it actually curled back, and after it passed the bag, then it landed in fair territory. It's a good call down that line. Yeah, very good call by Sam Holbrook. The one one. See we like to to make it known when an umpire makes a good call because we we get on them enough when they make bad calls. Sam Holbrook part of this crew which includes Randy Marsh behind home plate Angel Hernandez. And Hunter Wendelstadt. The at 37. And as you noted. The greatest slugging catcher in terms of home runs all time. Fastball misses in. 12 All Star games for Mike Piazza. Look at the career at Dolphin Stadium. Other than Miguel Cabrera, Mike Piazza has more at bats in this stadium than anybody else in the Marlins lineup. That ball did it tick Piazza. It's fielded in fair. Yeah, it did hit Piazza. First base umpire Angel Hernandez said it hit Piazza in the shoulder. And he was out of the batter's box. And if it's in fair territory and it hits you and you're out of the box, you're out. And then the put out would go to Miguel Olivo, the closest to the action. Yeah, it did catch him right on top of the back. Would have been out anyway, but instead of a 2 3 put out, it would go just to put out to the catcher. Good reactions by Miguel Olivo. And here is Adrian Gonzalez. Yes, he was the number one pick. The Marlins back in 2000. And yes, now he's in the big league, but he's not one of those guys that. The prospect a team gave up on and is going to come back to bite you. Because as he stands in, all you have to remember is. Who the Marlins got in exchange for him and what season that was and you know the value of that trade who get Urbina came in that trade from the Texas Rangers in 2003. Yeah and uh, without question without Uget Urbina the 
Marlins would not have gotten to that World Series. You would not have that enormous ring on your finger. <laughs> and also at the time, if you think about it, the, the Marlins had two young, outstanding minor league first baseman, Jason Stokes the other. Jason Stokes still with the organization. So they had the, the flexibility to make that deal. Ugla. And two quick outs here in the second inning. Today's home field advantage is brought to you by the good folks at Tennis Realty. And it's a home field advantage for the Marlins. The Teal Tower, as they call it, 26 feet, 6 inches. Any ball in play off of it. There's a little nook and cranny here or there. Good to have Bob Tennis and the folks at Tennis Realty aboard this year. Plus, we can always tell what time it is. Here's the acrobatic shortstop, Khalil Green. And he's headed in that direction. Khalil Green has tied this game. Maybe we ought to rethink this whole home field advantage thing. Well, I think Khalil Green is one of one of the young players in this league that's just going to get better and better. He had an outstanding four year career at Clemson. He's 26 right now. We saw him hit one of the longest home runs against the Marlins last year in San Diego. Mm -hmm. He has some power. Went to high school in Key West yep. and he just dropped the head of the bat on that pitch and sent it a long way. It's his third home run this year. He's homered against each team he's faced. He had a homer in the first series, in the Rockies series, and he homers here. Mitre pops Vinny Castilla out, but the Padres and the kid from Key West tie the game at one. Ford F-150 Super Crew or the Toyota Tundra Double Cab. The Tundra Double Cab has a bed over a half foot longer than the F-150 Super Crew. Now you may think that doesn't matter to you, but we found the tailgate is much more effective when closed. The full-size Toyota Tundra, a truck that handles the whole job. Now with available cash back and the XSB Sport Package discount, it's $4,000 in total savings. Toyota, moving forward. One size doesn't fit all. That's why Dish Network offers something for everybody. Whether you're a parent wanting good, clean programming for the whole family, or want to experience America's largest high-definition lineup, or want a package of America's best all-digital channels for a great everyday low price. With packages starting at just $19.99 a month, Dish Network has something for you at a price you want to pay. Call today and get Stars Movie Pack free for the first three months and find out how you can save $100. Dish Network. More choices for you. Better TV for all. Plus up to $200 in Visa gift cards. So with all you get, Justin Marciani, why not bundle with Bell South right now? I'm not Justin Marciani. Don't you want to be? Get the services you need and up to $200 in Visa gift cards. Only from Bell South. Listening, answering. Marlins Baseball in FSM Florida is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Khalil Green, better known for his diving stops out at shortstop, has ripped his third home run of the season to tie the game. Miguel Olivo leads it off for the Marlins. Olivo to be followed by Reggie Abercrombie. And the pitcher spot Sergio Mitre. Olivo familiar with some of the San Diego Padres. He was with them for about half a season last year. Did a good job. That's where his. Career at least his short career suddenly took a turn up. Olivo impressed the Padres enough that they seriously considered keeping him, especially since they knew they were going to lose their talented catcher, Ramon Hernandez.
Barfield just got the out. We check in with Craig Minervini. Thank you, Rich. Reggie Abercrombie getting the start here in game six. It's his fourth start in center field. Eric Reed has started the other two. Talk with Joe Girardi about his center field position. He said, hey, look, we're going to go day to day. We certainly would like to find a hot hand here. But I also wanted to get both guys in very early. He said this very interestingly, guys, to get their first hit out of the way to take some pressure off. Both did that in Houston. Now Abercrombie gets the start, showed great power in spring training, and Joe would like to see one of the guys get hot and take over maybe for a few weeks, but he also likes the fact to have two guys to take the pressure off one if they're not going well. Guys? Yeah, and it's tough to play righty-lefty for this next week for the Marlins. Yeah, and I also think it's a luxury that they both play center field exceptionally well, cover a lot of ground. Marlins are going to see six right-handers in a row. So Abercrombie is in against Williams to open this series. There's Eric Reed who had a tremendous diving catch in New York. Got his first major league hit out of the way. Reggie went after a breaking ball. It squirts away from Piazza. And Abercrombie is the second strikeout victim of Woody Williams. Our Just for Men target spotlight. Today it's Sergio Mitre. Last time he was on the mound, he was on, Tommy. Uh, he used that changeup as we talked about extremely well. Had great control, only one walk in that game. New and improved, Just for Men hair color, targets only the gray. Ain't nothing like it. And also showed in that game that he can swing the bat. Hit himself a double and also dropped down a nice sacrifice bunt. Mitre last year in a short stay with the Cubs in terms of hitting had 21 at bats and 11 hits. So the Marlins numbers one and two pitchers are two of the better hitting pitchers in the National League. And Sergio needs to be careful when he faces his counterpart Woody Williams an outstanding hitter himself former shortstop in college. Khalil Green behind the bag well struck by Mitre but the Marlins are down in order. Here in the second, we've played two in the home opener. The Padres, the Marlins, we're tied at one. When something is real, it shows. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Ain't nothing like. The Introducing real new thing. Just for Men. Its new true color formula targets only gray, replaces it with subtle tones for a natural look that is real. Real to the eye, real to the touch, real where it counts. New true color just for men. NHL Center Ice brings you all of the action from around the league. Now you can watch the race to the Stanley Cup with NHL Center Ice and get games from outside your local area from now through the first two rounds of the Stanley Cup playoffs for only $49. Offer available from April 5th through May 17, 2006. Order today. When it comes to sports, we're on your team. To order, call 888 Sports In. Panthers hockey is only on FSN Florida. The Panthers are fired up and ready to take on the NHL as they cross the border to battle the Leafs. Tonight at 7.30 on FSN Florida. The Mermaids are here for the home opener. We're glad you're here as well. The Padres and the Marlins are tied at one as we head to the third inning in HD on FSN Florida. Here's Josh Barfield. 
If the name's familiar, it should be. His father, Jesse, had a great major league career with the Blue Jays and the Yankees. And this youngster can hit Abercrombie coming in. He'll field it on a hop. And Josh Barfield leads off the third with a base hit. These two ball clubs are right back at it tomorrow, 1 o'clock, and we've got it for you on FSM Florida. Game two of the series. Craig Minervini starts it at 12.30 with Marlins on deck. You always have the best seat in the house. On the television home of the Marlins, FSN Florida and Sun Sports. So Williams, the former college shortstop at the University of Houston, can handle the bat. Yeah, an all-conference uh, shortstop and a, a career 206 hitter in the major leagues. How about that with three home runs? So a lot of options for Bochi. You have a pitcher that can hit. Obviously, he's squaring the bunt, but you never know. He could bring it back in a, in a hit and run situation. Drops it down. Good bunt. Olivo's out there. And Ugla covering. So the sacrifice is in order. Three game series with the Padres. And then a three game series with the Washington Nationals. And on Friday, April 14th, you can get hooked up by calling 1 877 Marlins. Get your seats. And the first 10,000 fans on Friday night will get a Marlins wall calendar courtesy of Publix. Marlins baseball, get hooked up. Here's Roberts now. Dave Roberts is the kind of player I think the Marlins want Eric Reed to be. Want to see that last play. Look at how Miguel Olivo took charge. Said, I got it. Got the pitcher out of the way. And that's a look for our new low home robo cam. Good shot. Pulled foul. And it's 0 2. From the seats below, Mike Lowell actually had a good game today. And Boston, a 5 3 lead in the ninth. Three hits for Mike. Three for three for Mike Lowell so far. Roberts will put it in play. He's got good wheels. He has the biggest stolen base in Boston Red Sox history. If you go back to that 2004 season. That one missed down low. And our report out of Boston telling us four for four now with three doubles he, for Mike Lowell. He just got another base hit. Yeah, think about it. Anything that someone with Boston does that, that helps them win a game against the Yankees is a big thing in New England. <laughs> the one-two pitch. Well, Roberts is a big thing in New England. I mean, you go back to 2004 in the ALCS. It was ninth inning. The Yankees were leading the Red Sox by a run. Roberts pinch ran at first base stole second and scored on Bill Miller's RBI single that tied the game at four from that point on the Red Sox didn't lose they came back to beat the Yankees and then a sweep in the World Series Jacobs spears the liner see Mike Jacobs make a couple of nice plays we saw him spear a line drive that ended the game in Houston the other night good reactions remember he signed as a, a catcher with the New York Mets so it just moves quickly with a couple of steps and then realizing where the runner is comes up and checks the runner right away. Yeah Roberts pinch ran for Kevin Millar in that game. Here's Termel Sledge. The guy that we saw last year briefly as a Washington National. Josh Barfield led off with a single, was sacrificed up. Two down now. Up the middle, Ugla can't get it into center field, base hit. Abercrombie up. The throw home is high, and he airmails it. And into second base goes Termel Sledge. You cannot allow that to happen. There, there are some mistakes that a rookie will make. That one you can't make. 
there is no chance that you're going to throw Josh Barfield out at the plate. And I'm sure Joe Girardi will talk to him about that. No play at all at the plate. There are two outs. He got a great jump. He has speed. All you do by making this throw is allow the Padres to get another runner in scoring position. For Brian Giles coming to the plate. The cutoff man is there for a reason. No chance at all. And he overthrows everybody. And here is Giles with Sledge in scoring position. And Mitre misses. Giles pulled the ground ball to Jacobs at first. And Mitre is behind him now 2 and 0. Oh. Well do you pitch around him with first base open to get to Mike Piazza. <laughs> the answer. Is apparently yes. And this is something I'll bet Mike Piazza hasn't seen a whole lot of in front of him. Well one thing to consider. Giles has faced Mitre's three for six in his career against Mitre. Piazza's first at bat. That was the first time he'd ever seen Sergio Mitre. Piazza hit a little dribbler out in front of the plate that actually bounced off his shoulder as he ran up the first baseline. That ended the first inning. Giles and Barfield aboard. And Mitre gets a high strike. Piazza's path to the major leagues came through South Florida. He was a Miami Hurricane. In his freshman year, he used to bug Ron Frazier, why am I not playing? He played in six games as a freshman and then transferred to Miami Dade Community College. Cabrera got the out there. And so Mitre gets Piazza. But the Padres get another run. San Diego 2, the Marlins 1. A simple brushstroke unites performance and design. With the engine placed near the center of gravity, and the wheels pushed to the far corners, a simple brushstroke becomes the more agile, more balanced G35. Infinity. Now lease the Infinity G35 sedan for $359 per month. Introducing the Sea Doo Film Series. It's a whole new way to look at boats and almost as fun as being on one of ours. Dive in at SeaDooFilms.com. While you're there, see how to get up to $1,000 in free gas on a PWC and great financing on a sport boat for a limited time only. Be there for opening day as your Marlins Battle of the Padres, Tuesday, April 11th at 4.05 when fans get a Marlins schedule magnet. Opening week continues on Wednesday and on Thursday. Bring a receipt for Benny Hanna and save up to 10 bucks at the box office. Call 1-877-MARLINS. Get hooked up. Round and round they've gone for two and a half innings. Dolphin Stadium, the home opener for the Marlins, along with Tommy Hutton and Craig Minervini, our entire FSN Florida crew. Rich Waltz with you. As Woody Williams facing the top of the order. Hanley Ramirez takes down low. 
And it's 1-0. Ramirez ripped a triple into right center field. We're proud to be coming to you in high definition here on FSN Florida. You talked about the uh, series the Padres just had with the Rockies. When I saw the scores, the Rockies scored 10 or more runs, three straight games. I kept thinking the series was in Denver, and it wasn't. It was at Petco Park in San Diego. There's a swing and a miss. If you're fiddling around with your high def set trying to find the ball game, or you want to go to high def right now, You'll want to do that just to see Tommy's tie today. There are the channels you can choose. Ramirez with the count, two balls and two strikes. And I wore it particularly for high definition. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, Petco Park hasn't been open that long. It, this will be its third season, but that's the most amount of runs a team has scored in three games in a three game series. They've made a little change. They brought right center field in a little bit, and it's still a, a pitcher's park. Ramirez into right center field. Roberts and Giles. And Roberts is there to make the play. The National Series starts on Friday. On Saturday at 6.05, it is one of those scratch off Saturdays that's new this year, and you'll want to be here on Saturday. It's presented by the Miami Herald. The first 15,000 fans get a scratch off card and 100 fans will win an autographed Dontrell Willis Team USA jersey. Make sure you take advantage of the four for 54 deal. Call 1-877-MARLINS and get hooked up today. Here's Hermida. Woody Williams got a big out in the first when he struck Hermida out with Ramirez at third and nobody out. Nice crowd on hand Rich and I thought a, a really nice response when the the Marlins were introduced prior to the game. Hermita late on that it's one and one. It, home opener always special we had a chance to witness that down in Houston. Yeah. Thought it interesting that on. Marlins on deck. Craig Minervini asked Joe Girardi about this ballpark. And Joe said it's, it will favor pitchers and defense, and that's right up my alley. He likes pitching and defense. Breaking ball in the dirt. And of course, Joe is a, a visiting player during his career with the, with the Cubs, with St. Louis, with the Rockies. He was able to play some games in this ballpark. He hit a home run here, but he told Minervini he didn't remember it. You know why he didn't remember it because he was the type of catcher he was thinking about the next inning and what pitches he was going to call for his pitcher. That was the kind of player he was. He probably could tell you the pitch sequence in the ninth inning. Yeah. Two balls two strikes on Hermida. Slow roller. Castilla, for as old as he is, he's still got it defensively. He's one of the better third basemen around. Yeah, you, you lose a little of that range, which Vinny has. Good changeup by Woody Williams, by the way. But once you get to balls, he still has the good hands, and he's always had an accurate throwing arm. Yep. He had a year a couple years ago where he made just six errors. Set, I believe, the major league record that Mike Lowell broke the next year. Cabrera walked back in the first. It was one of those uh, records, too, when Mike Lowell broke it, hardly anybody knew. It was never really mentioned until the next year. Cabrera jumps on that one to left center field. Roberts going back, reaching, and he makes the catch. 430 feet from home plates. We've played three Dolphin Stadium. Ooh, it's 2 1 Padres. Chevy makes the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And now they're making it easier to drive one. Down payment assistance from Chevy. You choose a Silverado or Colorado, Chevy will help you get in it. Down payment assistance. 
a better way to buy or lease a new Chevy pickup. Chevy, America's number one brand, America's number one value. Enough said. See your Southern Chevy dealers. It's Macy's One Day Sale going on now. Look for the lowest prices of the season, plus savings and values throughout the store. Great morning specials till noon. And get an extra 40 to 50% off clearance. Also save 50% on Style & Company. Almost everything for kids is 50% off. Kitchen Electric's your choice, $27.99. But you better hurry. Macy's Way to Shop. Did you know Honda makes portable generators? Well, they do, and they're perfect for camping, working anywhere you need, for all kinds of RV comforts like air conditioning or for emergency backup. Lightweight and quiet, Honda's got a generator that's right for you. See the CU2000? Two of them provided enough power to film this entire commercial. Honda, the power of choice. Call us for the dealer nearest you or shop online now at honda.com. Right now, as members of Best Western Speed Rewards, stay six nights and earn a free night and earn points towards exclusive NASCAR-licensed merchandise. Join today at bestwesternracing.com slash free night. You're watching FSN. Opening day crowd, Dolphin Stadium, 2-1 ball game. The Padres on top of the Marlins in the fourth inning. We'll be here all week. One o'clock starts tomorrow. And on Thursday, spring break around the area. So the next two days, great opportunities to come out and see the Marlins and the Padres. And here's Gonzalez. He'll turn 24 in May. Had a couple of opportunities with the Texas Rangers. Strokes that one to left field. Sending Willingham back and Josh is there to make the play. Bring on the duck. Our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. First position player to pitch in a game for the Marlins. Wow that's a good one. I had that opportunity to do that one time. How long did you last? I, I actually got through the whole inning. I retired three men. I, I pitched a complete inning against the St. Louis Cardinals. Did you get through it unscathed? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a crafty left hander? I thought I was until I threw one of my crafty curveballs up there to Keith Hernandez and he hit it out for a home run. I'm going to guess maybe John Cangelosi. Oh, Khalil Green turned on that one. But it's in foul territory. For some reason, I think I remember Kanji coming in and pitching in a game. Sergio Mitre in this ball game gave up the home run to Green in the second, the RBI single, the sledge in the third. Now right, Khalil Green. Cabrera digs it out. That's a nice play. Yeah, Khalil Green has ripped a couple of balls. The home run he hit hard. This one hopper to Miguel Cabrera. Watch the smoothness. He loves it over there. He feels very comfortable at third base, and he's made some nice plays this and, year already. And we really haven't talked about it enough, Tommy, how, how easily the train. I know he came up as an infielder and at third base, but he spent two seasons out in the outfield. And it's like he never left the place. There's Vinny Castilla, who is 0 for 1. Castilla. There's Ty Waller, who is the first base coach for the Padres Waller was their minor league director for many years and before the game he was talking about Cabrera and when he first saw Cabrera in the minor leagues at third base and he made the same observation that you and I made last year when Miguel made the move he looks faster and quicker at third than he did in left field 
in the outfield you you see him because he doesn't have exceptional speed he just has average to below average speed you'd see him lumbering after balls in the outfield so consequently he would look slow in the infield everything's quicker you're making the quick moves and those he has yet to, to show you what kind of an athlete Miguel is his introduction in the first game he ever played in right field was at Wrigley Field in the championship series National League championship series OK kid go play right field a position you've not played before and he didn't have a glove to play <laughs> there he used Chris Aguila's glove in that ball game and into the World Series Abercrombie Willingham almost a bit of a collision there Abercrombie makes a catch a three out inning one two three for Sergio Mitre and a beautiful play by Miguel Cabrera. First day. Nervous? Want me to drop you off here so you can walk up? No, you can pour it up. Sure you're gonna be all right? Should be. Bye, honey. Bye. What's up? Nice ride. One size doesn't fit all. That's why Dish Network offers something for everybody. Whether you're a parent wanting good, clean programming for the whole family, or want to experience America's largest high-definition lineup, or want a package of America's best all-digital channels for a great everyday low price. With packages starting at just $19.99 a month, Dish Network has something for you at a price you want to pay. Call today and get Star's Movie Pack free for the first three months and find out how you can save $100. Dish Network. More choices for you. Better TV for all. So let's mix a lavender. Hey, what you doing? Nothing. Come on over and let's play at our house. We'll play some games. Even the kids can play. Grab a bite to eat. Oh, invite your friends. We have plenty of room. Mikasuki Resort and Gaming. You bet you're gonna have a great time. Bottom four, 2-1 ball game. Padres on top of the Marlins here at Dolphin Stadium. Time for our Geico quote of the day. I like the way we're playing baseball right now. We're just falling short in some situations. Dontre Willis. Safe to say, Rich, Dontre got the uh, biggest ovation in the uh, player introductions. He did, and he deserves it. He pitched a whale of a game up in New York. Pitched very well in the opener in Houston. Mike Jacobs, Josh Willingham, Dan Ugla against Woody Williams. Williams made 28 starts in the Padres rotation last year. And that's an area of this ball club that has changed with Adam Eaton and Brian Lawrence, a couple of guys that have been in the rotation for a few years. Moving on. Well the interesting thing Lawrence and Eaton Lawrence going to the Nationals Eaton to Texas both on the disabled list Eaton probably out for the year had surgery. And one of the pitchers they thought would fill a spot on the rotation is hurt right now as well Sean Estes. Little looper left field and Sledge is there to make the catch. All right bring the duck back. Let's answer that question. Let's see if Tommy's right. Affleck. Our Aflac trivia question. First Marlins position player to pitch. Tommy says Cangelosi for 100. Had a baby. Hey, 1997 against the Padres. Yeah. One inning, one walk. He did a lot better than I did. Now, was that your first year with the ball club? 1997. Man? You picked a good year to come aboard. Yes, I did. Good timing. <laughs> Willingham. Timing is everything. Willingham takes outside. And it isn't hitting, too. And it's 1 0. Well, the Marlins first inning would have been a, a wash were it not for Josh Willingham. Remember Ramirez opened with a triple. Williams then got two outs before Willingham ripped this one into left field. Got a little curveball from Woody Williams and stayed up. Wasn't really a hanger. It was just about belt high though. The pitch misses inside. 
Willingham out in left field. Literally, not figuratively today. And a high pop-up. Remember, the wind is difficult. Barfield plays it easily, though. Two down. Panthers are in action tonight, 7.30 on FSM Florida. They take on Toronto. The Maple Leafs up in Toronto. Panthers hockey live tonight, 7.30 here on FSN Florida. Here's Ugla. Ugla to left field, sledge to the track, and he makes the catch. One, two, three, go the Marlins in the fourth, headed to the fifth inning. Home opener for the Marlins. The Padres lead at 2-1. Hey. Hey. Whew. Yeah. You look relaxed for somebody in your condition. Yeah, it's because I have Aflac. What do you mean? Oh, when I'm hurt and miss work? Aflac gives me cash to help pay bills. My health insurance does it. You mean like car payments? Mm-hmm. Electric bills? Mm-hmm. Or the rent? Yeah. Huh. Even food. Chinese is here. Great. I love duck. Aflac. Ask about it at work. <laughs> NHL Center Ice brings you all of the action from around the league. Now you can watch the race to the Stanley Cup with NHL Center Ice and get games from outside your local area from now through the first two rounds of the Stanley Cup playoffs for only $49. Offer available from April 5th through May 17, 2006. Order today. When it comes to sports, we're on your team. To order, call 888-SPORTS-IN. One ball game. Padres on top of the Marlins in the top of the fifth in the sunshine at Dolphin Stadium. Josh Barfield will lead it off for the Padres. And he hits a shot to left that Willingham came in on and then makes a stab for and can't hold on to. Such are the travails of a of a youngster trying to learn how to play left field. Learning how to play it and also playing left field in the ballpark that he's not played left field in before uh, on a blustery sunny day. Now as the season goes on you expect him to make a play like this. But opening day he came in a little bit as he tried to go back on it and reach up couldn't hang on. And Woody Williams is bunting again. Jacobs will tag Williams out and as he did in the third inning Williams successfully moves a runner up and here comes Dave Roberts. Padres won the West last year the third Western Division title in Bruce Bochy's 11 seasons this being his 12th. He and general manager Kevin Towers have been a, a real nice team in San Diego. They went to the World Series of course in 98 and they won the division as well in 96 and of course last year. Barfield at second Roberts. Grounds it foul and of course now you add to Kevin Towers who's always been considered one of the top general managers in baseball. The fact that Sandy Alderson joined the club last year as the new CEO of the Padres. They've got the new ballpark, just a gorgeous park, Petco in downtown San Diego. 
the revitalized uh, downtown San Diego. But they don't have Craig Minervini. We do. Hey, Craig, what's up? The two largest additions to Dolphin Stadium for the 2006 season are not Reggie Abercrombie or Dante Culpepper. In fact, they are these two incredibly large. How'd you like this in your living room? HD displays on the board just over my shoulder up there. That one up there is now considered the world's largest high definition television. It runs 50 feet high by 140 feet wide. The other one is a little bit shorter, but this one here they say is 20% bigger than the Guinness record, which I believe, guys, is the one that we saw in Atlanta that we talked about that's some eight stories high. This one is a little bit different. It's rectangular in nature. It would look great, Tommy, in your living room, too, for Marlins baseball. It'd be fun to watch some of the replays when you come out to the stadium here for Marlins and Dolphins games this year. Back to you. Robert swings and misses. And Mitre gets a strikeout. Yeah, that is a nice addition to the ballpark. As is Sergio Mitre. Yeah, and all of a sudden he's he's using that changeup. He used it extremely effective to Dave Roberts to get him to strike out. Look at the ball, just dives low and away to Roberts and had him way out in front. The key to that high definition, uh, big screen out there. Now I have to be able to afford a house to put it in. <laughs> that pitch misses down low. You might be able to see that picture from Palm Beach County. Just look southward. I mean, it's high def. It's huge. You can see it from a long ways away. Sledge had a big hit in the third. A two out single that chased home a run. Hanley Ramirez. Mitre gives up the leadoff single to Barfield, but works out of it. Headed to the bottom of the fifth. Dolphin Stadium, 2 1, Padres. Out of all the car dealers on the web, only one connects you to the world's largest selection of cars and trucks, Marooney.com. Click Marooney.com to shop over 80,000 cars and trucks. And you can ask for Marooney's special internet price on every vehicle. Right, Dan Marino? Why run around? Get price and selection with one pass at Marooney.com. Marooney! Click Marooney.com or visit any of our 32 South Florida Marooney locations. NHL Center Ice brings you all of the action from around the league. Now you can watch the race to the Stanley Cup with NHL Center Ice and get games from outside your local area from now through the first two rounds of the Stanley Cup playoffs for only $49. Offer available from April 5th through May 17, 2006. Order today. When it comes to sports, we're on your team. To order, call 888-SPORTS-IN. A blustery day here in Miami. The Padres have a 2-1 lead over Joe Girardi and the Marlins. Home opener for the Marlins. Bottom of the ninth. Miguel Olivo bunts Woody Williams. And Olivo with a head first slide. Still can't beat it. And that'll bring Reggie Abercrombie to the plate. Woody Williams has been the consummate veteran right-hander in this ball game. Marlins threatened in the first got just the one run and since then Williams has been outstanding. Yeah I think Woody uh, showed us a little bit of that uh, University of Houston shortstop on that last play too, getting over and making a fine play to throw out Olivo. Shallow right field Giles fighting sun and wind. Two down. This is the home opener for the Marlins. For us, we're just getting warmed up in HD. We've got tomorrow and Thursday's game in HD. 
Friday night, we're back at you with the Nationals in town. Saturday and Sunday, no television this weekend. We're just going to whet your appetite for that road trip into Cincinnati, Philadelphia, and Chicago. Mitre Williams kick save and a beauty. And a 1 2 3 inning for the Marlins here in the fifth. Padres 2, Marlins 1. Home opener for the Marlins. Chevy makes the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And now they're making it easier to drive one. Down payment assistance from Chevy. You choose a Silverado or Colorado, Chevy will help you get in it. Down payment assistance. A better way to buy or lease a new Chevy pickup. Chevy, America's number one brand, America's number one value. Enough said. See your Southern Chevy dealers. Good news. I got promoted. Better news. They got DirecTV. My new office has a clear view for miles. My DirecTV has 155 crystal clear channels. I have a $1,700 expense account. I have over 1,700 movies every month. I meet with the CEO every Friday. I meet the Fockers whenever I want. I just got an assistant. I just got three months of HBO, Star, Showtime, and Cinemax for free. Can you give me the number for DirecTV? No. I'll make sure you heard me. Get over 155 channels for $29.99 a month. That's half the price of cable. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. week continues as your Marlins battle the Nationals. Friday fans get a Marlins wall calendar. On Scratch Off Saturday, fans can win a Willis autographed jersey and take advantage of the 4 for 54 offer. On Sunday, fans get a Marlins flag. Call 1-877-MARLINS. Get hooked up. Panthers hockey is only on FSN Florida. The Panthers are fired up and ready to take on the NHL as they cross the border to battle the Leafs. Tonight at 7.30 on FSN Florida. Close to 30,000 on hand. Dolphin Stadium, 2-1 ball game. The Padres on top of the Marlins. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Florida Marlins LP. May not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Florida Marlins LP. Here's Giles now. Mitre misses high with a fastball. I don't think it's any accident that the Padres went after Giles to keep him there. Especially with Sandy Alderson there. I mean, it was Billy Bean that got the headlines with Moneyball and all of that. But remember, Sandy Alderson was the general manager in Oakland and Billy Bean was kind of his apprentice. And I know you're getting at the on base percentage thing. Yeah he's which Giles is, just for yeah. seam heads and those he's are a master at that guys that love the on base percentage and the slugging percentage Giles led the National League led the major league in walks last year at 119. On base percentage was 423 last season. And you add that with the uh, slugging percentage and the OPS in the 900s. Pretty good. The OPS. Now, in spring training, you diagrammed the whole OPS thing on the blackboard. I think I did that one. Here's a 3 2. It's down low, and Brian Giles has worked his second walk of the ball game. The first was intentional, this one not. A lot of ticket plans for Marlin fans to get hooked up with in the 2006 season. The full season tickets to 41 or 20 game flex plans. It starts at just $150 for adults. You get the best seats and exclusive access to players. Guaranteed giveaways and special gifts as well. The number to call 1877 Marlins. You can call right now and get hooked up.
I thought it was fitting Rich with Giles up there. The walks leader in the major leagues. A guy who's patient at the plate. Leads off the inning after the Marlins. Swung at three first pitches and Woody Williams threw three pitches last inning to retire the Marlins. Piazza. 0 for 2. Broken bat base hit left field. And Piazza has singled. Of course we we'd start the story about Piazza as a hurricane. He was a tall rangy kid that had yet to fill out Ron Frazier had him on his bench. He went to Miami Dade to, to play some more started to fill out was a very late draft pick by the Dodgers. A relative of Tommy Lasorda many said that the Dodgers were simply doing a favor for Lasorda and like a rocket he took off through their system. Well to his credit too they they thought the best way for him to get to the big leagues was as a catcher. Yep. And he actually went down to the Dominican and stayed at the Dominican Academy that the Dodgers have and worked on his catching skills. He said there were 45 players there. Only one of them spoke English and that was him. <laughs> Here's Gonzalez now. Gonzalez has kind of taken the sting out of losing Ryan Klesko because he's played very well. You, know, you noted he was stuck behind some talented first baseman in the Marlins organization in Texas. The Rangers have Mark Teixeira at first base an all star nowhere to go there. And getting an opportunity he, he got himself ready too. he was uh, a participant in the World Baseball Classic played for for Mexico. The 1 0 pitch. Mitre misses low and outside. He's a San Diego kid. Raised in that San Diego area. Padres in business Giles walk Piazza single. Mitre working here in the sixth inning and the shadows now. Starting to creep out over the plate. Sergio Mitre of course uh, drafted by the Cubs. Came over in the deal for Juan Pierre. Drafting the seventh round in 01. It's the same year that Mark Pryor was their first round pick. Slow roller Mitre goes to second got one there. Good job. The reason this is a good job is because a lot of pitchers that don't have the confidence in setting themselves making that good throw will go ahead and get the sure out at first but by getting the out at second base you you keep a double play in order and have a chance to get out of the inning. And a lot of that's communication I'm sure his catcher Miguel Olivo was yelling to him you have a play at second base. So Giles survives at third. Gonzalez is now at first. Tough guy to double up though in Khalil Green. Right hander Josh Johnson in the bullpen. Yeah Green. Has hit the ball hard twice. He homered to deep left center and then hit a one hop smash at Cabrera at third base. The other little part of that uh, Cubs Marlins relationship, Ricky Nolasco came over in the deal as well. He's in the Marlins bullpen as Rick Kranitz comes out to. Check on me, Trey. He wasn't part of the deal, Kranitz, but it didn't hurt that Kranitz was the AAA pitching coach for the Cubs the last few years. Yeah, Nolasco, a fourth round pick in 01. And then if you go back one more year, Dontrell Willis was an eighth round pick of the Cubs in 2000. And I think you, you know the rest of the story to that one. And Kranitz was familiar with Willis 
from his time with the Cubs as well. Well, Miguel Oliva wants to make sure that he and Sergio Mitre are on the same page with Khalil Green right now, who already has three home runs this season and has hit two balls hard today. And he hits that one hard and deep to left field. If it's fair, it's gone. It is gone. Khalil Green, second of the day. And apparently they didn't have their signal straight. Because Khalil Green jumped all over that pitch. Well, sometimes you can have your signals right, but if you don't make the right pitch, that fastball was up. Remember the fastball down that he hit for a home run? That one up in the zone, and for Khalil Green, his fourth home run this year. Wow, he's off to a hot start. Vinny Castilla takes a fastball high. And maybe this is the bust out year offensively for Khalil Green. He's a spectacular defensive player. And right now he's got the Padres on top. 5 1. Well the sting in that one is that it was a three run shot. A solo shot a three run shot. A Turmel sledge RBI single is the only other run for the Padres. Castilla pulls it long throw Cabrera. Two down. <laughs> Opening week ends on Sunday, April 16th. The Marlins and the Nationals at 105. 1877 Marlins, the number to call right now. Lock in your seats. Be part of the first 10,000 fans in the door. And you get a Marlins flag courtesy of Benny Hanna and matchup promotions. And of course, on Sunday, it's always Doctors Hospital Family Sunday. That means kids run around the bases after the ball game. Marlins baseball get hooked up. Josh Barfields, a pair of singles. And Barfield has three singles in the ball game. Well, he's had a, a terrific minor league career, getting an opportunity at 23 years of age, and as you said, had a great spring training. They gave him number 15 when he made the club, and he said, uh, actually, guys, I'd like to wear number 29. Is anyone wearing it? And they said no. And he called his dad, and his dad started to cry because that was Jesse's number when he was a major leaguer. You talked about Jesse Barfield, 241 career home runs. Woody Williams pops it up. Jacobs can't make the play. It popped out of his glove. We've seen both first basemen venture over there. That one needed a little bit more hang time for Jake to get over there and have an easier play. He was there, but he was there as he was moving and couldn't quite hang on. Two down. Three runs across on another Khalil Green home run. Olivo. Well, we've seen some quick snap throws from Olivo already this year. We've seen some great throws to second base as well. He's going to keep guys honest out there on the bases. Yeah, Khalil Green, the wrecking crew today. The, the other day in New York, it was David Wright who drove in all three runs for the Mets. Barfield stole 20 bases in the minor leagues last year. He had hamstring problems in 2004, and it really affected his batting average. But he does have some speed. Oh, 
Olivo again going to give him a try. And the count one and two on Woody Williams. Well, when you see that hitter swing and miss, sometimes that runner freezes a little bit. And he puts that throw right on top of the bag every time. Well, another tester for Jacobs. And this one bangs off the dugout. The Marlins open the road trip in Cincinnati. And hopefully the Reds will have cooled off by then. <laughs> they beat the Cubs 9 to 2 today and hit six home runs in the process. Adam Dunn hit his fourth. Bronson Arroyo got the win and he homered as well. He's homered in his two starts this year. Reds go to 5 and 2. Griffey, Kearns, and Carnacion. Dunn hit two homers. One and two on Woody Williams. He went around and the inning is over. But not before Khalil Green strikes for the second time. In the second inning, it was a solo shot. Here, a three run job. 5-1 Padres lead the Marlins headed to the bottom of the sixth at Dolphin Stadium. First day. Nervous. Want me to drop you off here so you can walk up? No, you can pour it up. Sure you're going to be all right? Should be. Bye, honey. Bye. What's up? Nice ride. Uh, I thought all those reports had to be done by noon. That they do. It's 11.50, Jerry. That Rico MFP prints at 55 pages per minute. Job ready by 11.59. 11.59. I like to push the envelope. Uh-huh. Move your ideas forward with Rico Dependability. Introducing the Sea-Doo Film Series. It's a whole new way to look at boats, and almost as fun as being on one of ours. Dive in at SeaDooFilms.com. While you're there, see how to get up to $1,000 in free gas on a PWC and great financing on a sport boat for a limited time only. 5-1 ball game, bottom six. Padres on top. Welcome back to the Coors Light sixth inning. It's time now to refresh your inner fan with Coors Light. You ready? Marlins, they rock. I love Marlins. Who's your favorite player? Miguel Cabrera is my favorite. I like him too. He's hot. Hanley Ramirez is going to be a stud, and I think uh, Jeremy Hermit is going to be a stud. Both of those, and their pitching looks good. I saw an Alaska pitch the other night. He throws gas. A chance to refresh your inner fan with Coors Light. At some of the popular night spots around South Florida. Hanley Ramirez top of the order. Hanley Ramirez down the left field line. Hanley Ramirez on his way to second. And he'll hold there with a double. Well I tell you what Hanley Ramirez now on the year. With three doubles and he has two triples. He tripled his first time up today certainly endearing himself to the home crowd. Just absolutely jumps on this first pitch from Woody Williams. And I think we've seen the talent and the ability that he has to use the entire field. The triple was to right center and that double down the left field line. It's at the time of game, if you're down to the Padres, you want to try to make it up right now. You don't want to get to the eighth and the ninth inning. Because that's the strength of the Padres is the back end of that bullpen. Scott Linebrink. It is a fabulous middle reliever. And then of course Trevor Hoffman is still the closer. Hermita takes a strike. 
Well, they have that bullpen busy now. I think they're just happy that Woody Williams has gotten them this far. He's closing in on 70 pitches. But this is his first start of the year. Hermida, right field, base hit. Holding at third is Ramirez. And it's set up nicely now for Miguel Cabrera with runners at the corners. Jeremy Hermida now one for three. Clay Hensley and Alan Embry. Darren Balsey, the pitching coach for the Padres. I think some people possibly would have wanted to see Ramirez score on that, but this is uh, a situation where you look at the scoreboard. The scoreboard dictates what you do just about in everything in the game, and when you're down by four runs, you have your big bopper coming up in Miguel Cabrera. Hey, keep Hanley at third. Keep Hermita at first base. Now in a situation, a tie game, late in the game, yeah, you might take a shot sure. because Giles' arms is, is just average out there in right field. Or if you're up a run or two or down a run or two, you're right. Cabrera hit a ball 430 feet his last time up, and he rips this one to left field. Back goes Sledge off the wall. Ramirez will score. Hermida to third, Cabrera to second. It's 5-2. They're not rolling over. They're not going to do that all year. And they've pounded away at Woody Williams as he's probably tiring here in the sixth inning. What a shot by Miguel Cabrera. He's just wishing he would have gotten a little elevation in this. Line drive quickly got over the head of Sledge. He plays it nicely, and Miguel has the two-base hit. It's a ballpark that can take one from you on his 430 foot warning track shot. And on that one he hits the base of the wall in that short porch in left field. And here comes Bruce Bochy. And here comes Alan Embry. The lefty comes on. Padres five Marlins two. Here's a Marooney call to the bullpen. When you need a car, truck or van, who are you going to call? Maroonie! When you think Panthers hockey, think the Cup. And when you think real estate, think Century 21 Tennis Realty, South Florida's winning team. Whether buying or selling, your home is the most important investment you have, and experience counts. For over 25 years, the tennis team offers full service at competitive prices. So call the pros at Century 21 Tennis Realty today. Hi, I'm Bob Tennis. When you're ready to buy or sell, come join the winning team at Tennis Realty. Century 21 Tennis Realty, proud sponsor of Florida Panthers hockey. You've been hurt in an accident and you're thinking of hiring an attorney. How does the David Singer Law Firm look at your serious accident case? We look at every case as a race against time. How aggressive are we? It starts when we rush out to see you and we'll push every day to move the case further and further along. We hustle because we know you want us to. If you want me to start on your case right now, then call 1-800-ASK-FREE. Why wait? Call David Singer at 1-800-ASK-FREE. You know, I gotta tell you, since I've been hurt and missing work, you've been a big help to this family. Ah. No, really. The cash we get from Athlac helps us maintain the house, put food on the table, ah. and my Jenny continues with her piano lessons. Yep, this family's doing just fine. <laughs> and it's all thanks to... <laughs> Athlac. Ask about it at work. Marlins Baseball on FSM Florida is brought to you by personal injury attorney David Singer. Injured in an accident, call David Singer at 1-800-ASK-FREE for your free consultation. You guys seen a lot of situations. The situational left-hander, Alan Embry, 36 years old, 12th year as a big leaguer, and his situation worked to the lefty, Mike Jacobs. A run across on a Cabrera double. Jacobs has a pair of home runs this year, one of them against left-hander Andy Pettit, who doesn't give up homers to lefties often. 
And I think Jacobs will become more comfortable as the year goes on facing left-handers because he's going to get that opportunity. He went after that low fastball that came in at 92. Nobody out. A ground ball to the right side or up the middle. Plates a run because the Padre infield is back. Even at third is Castilla. You can see Embry's numbers. You know, and even a ground ball to the right side not only brings a run in, but it moves Cabrera over to third base. And Embry knows that, so he keeps it off the plate. And quickly it's 0-2. Embry in that hot seat a few times last year. He spent time with both the Red Sox and the Yankees. He's the, that's a rarity. I think it, <laughs> I read a note where he was the first guy to do that since Joe Oliver did it. Back in 2001. A former catcher. Yes. Little line drive. Green makes the catch and Cabrera is doubled off. And there's two down. Say what you want about rookie mistakes. This was a mistake by a guy who's considered a veteran. I know what he was thinking but you have to make sure the ball goes over his head and is not caught right there. He thinks it's over his head. So he takes a couple of steps because even if it goes over his head, he's not able to score. He's just going to go to third base. A mistake by Miguel. And now let's see if Bruce Bochy will get the righty to face Willingham. It looks like Willingham will face the lefty. You know, if not for the double play, we may have seen the righty. It's a good point. Willingham had a two out single in the first, popped out in the fourth. Hermita is still at third. That was huge for San Diego to come up with the double play there. Here's the 1 0. Willingham center field. He'll get the run home. His second two out RBI single of the ball game. And the Marlins inch closer. It's 5 3. And that heightens the frustration for Cabrera on the bench. Yeah, you can't say he would have driven in two runs because he may not have been facing Embry right. had that situation happened. But still, a big two out RBI single for Josh Willingham. Come on, fellas. Ugla now has popped out and flied out. Willingham's at first. Ugla takes a strike. Clawed and scratched his way through the minor leagues. Last year at Double A had a huge offensive year. And a lot of teams took notice. He was on the radar of a lot of teams if the Diamondbacks didn't put him on their 40 man roster and they did not. That allowed other teams in baseball to select him in the rule five draft. Put some money down you get that player if he stays on the big league roster the entire year you can keep him. And Ugla as far as he's concerned is here to stay. Twenty one home runs eighty seven RBI's for Ugla last year in double A. In the Southern League. He was second in the Southern League in total bases. Embry's out in front, 0 oh 2. The Mets beat Washington 7 1. Marlins here. As Embry almost threw it away. I wonder if anybody was hit by a pitch in that uh, Mets Washington game. <laughs> That's right. Of course, that, Pedro goes tomorrow night, I believe. Yeah, Brian Bannister pitched well to get the win. Carlos Beltran and Alfonso Soriano home ring. 
For Soriano, it's his third home run as a national. 0 2 to Ugla. I think it's interesting both Soriano and Jose Vidro, who's playing that second base position, both are off to hot starts. Boy, and that's why they're there. The Nationals desperately needed offense and some punch last year. The Marlins could use a few here. Down two in the sixth. They've scored a couple in this inning. And Ugla works the count deeper now. It's two and two. Early in the season, as we start the second week, the Marlins have had much better success against left handed pitchers than against right handers. Their big night against Andy Pettit down in Houston helps. Here's the 2 2. Ugla pops it up. First base side. Gonzalez makes the play. The Marlins will have to settle for two runs on four hits. Hanley Ramirez has a triple and a double. And the Marlins inch closer. It's 5 3. Chevy makes the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And now they're making it easier to drive one. Down payment assistance from Chevy. You choose a Silverado or Colorado, Chevy will help you get in it. Down payment assistance. A better way to buy or lease a new Chevy pickup. Chevy, America's number one brand, America's number one value. Enough said. See your Southern Chevy dealers. It's Macy's One Day Sale going on now. Look for the lowest prices of the season, plus savings and values throughout the store. Great morning specials till noon. And get an extra 40 to 50% off clearance. Also save 50% on Style & Company. Almost everything for kids is 50% off. Kitchen Electric's your choice, $27.99. But you better hurry. Macy's Way to Shop. So let's mix a lavender. Hey, what you doing? Nothing. Come on over and let's play at our house. We'll play some games. Even the kids can play. Grab a bite to eat. Oh, invite your friends. We have plenty of room. Mikasuki Resort and Gaming. You bet you're gonna have a great time. Here's what's been heard around the water cooler brought to you by Gatorade with 11 players who have never played a game at Dolphin Stadium heading into today and 14 overall Marlins new to the area. You can imagine how busy the lone off day was Monday with the team finally back in town. They did have an optional workout for a few but guys talking to Wes Helms told me did a grocery shopping getting settled in in Aventura. Reggie Abercrombie to his hotel. Also Chris Aguila settling in in Fort Lauderdale. And Joe Girardi said there's always baseball in our area no matter what. So my son had his full catcher's gear on. He was sliding across the tile right into me. And I got out of the way and marked the wall up. And he wasn't very popular in the Girardi household. Busy day, though, guys. I think the fans don't realize that the normal stuff, the everyday errand type stuff, very hard to do when you're a player, especially when you're new to an area. Back to you. That's right. Here's Josh Johnson, new to this ball game. As he takes over for Sergio Mitre. Second appearance of the year for the hard throwing right hand a real heavy sinking fastball. And I'm sure this youngster was scrambling around yesterday trying to make sure his accommodations. And yeah you, there's so much that goes into it. You, you have to figure out what, what are the best routes to get to the ballpark. Well and, and of course the Marlins were all the young Marlins were up at spring training and then hit the road and never had a chance to come down here and settle and then go on the road trip. They went right from spring training. Where's the closest drugstore? Where's the grocery store? Sledge. How do I get FSN Florida in HD? Mm -hmm. Get the cable hooked up quickly.
Johnson came up and in on sledge and Ugla throws him out. Well, we had a chance to sit down with Reggie Abercrombie and ask him about getting settled in South Florida. It's okay, you know, can't get caught up in there, you know, win the big league. So I'm, I'm happy if I'm in a hotel for the rest of the season or staying outside on this field. So I'm really not worried about it. <laughs> so if you see a tent out in center field, that's Reggie. See a cot in the dugout. Yes. This is an opportunity for Josh Johnson, by the way. We talked about it in his appearance in Houston, primarily a starter in his minor league career. He's a fourth round pick in 02. And last year, double A was 12 and 4, a very good season. But he's found a little success. He did so toward the end of spring training. He's found a little success out of that bullpen. Breaking ball misses outside. Just missed. He'll throw a slider. He'll throw a good sinking fastball, and he's working on a changeup. Giles already has two more walks. And Johnson misses inside. He has powerful stuff, Tommy. And I think the Marlins still see him as a starter, but watching him come out of the bullpen and throw strikes and throw hard, you almost picture him as a guy that can finish ball games as well. He walks Giles. Rick Kranitz, Joe Girardi. Here's Piazza. Giles has walked nine times already this year. And the Padres are playing in their sixth game. <laughs> Boy, who would have thought that the Padres cleanup hitting catcher would be Mike Piazza this year and would also have a goatee. You know Mike usually just went with the mustache. Now he's complimented that with the Watch full goatee. Right I notice things like that. That's why you're paid the big bucks. <laughs> That's why you're an analyst. <laughs> I think he wants to prove a lot to to himself to others. You know, he came on strong uh, the second part of the season for the Mets mm -hmm. but injuries knocked him knocked him out early in the season. Just the fact that his career average over 300 all the home runs we talked about the power that he's had. Former rookie of the year 1993. Johnson's out in front of him one and two. Giles at first with two down. Joe Borowski in the Marlins bullpen. I think Brian Giles and Marcus Giles had some good backyard baseball games when they were kids. Without a doubt. Piazza has his second hit of the ball game and Giles can still scoot a bit into the corner as Willingham and he kicks it and Giles is coming to the plate. He will score. And the Padres move back on top by three. A single and an error on the left fielder. Well I think you could call it a double and an error on the left fielder because I believe once the ball got in that area there was no chance for Willingham to throw it a second to get Piazza. You're right. But once he booted it that allowed Giles to score. Giles would not have scored had Willingham picked that ball cleanly. He's had trouble out there today. And here's Gonzalez. So Johnson got the first two hitters but then walked Giles.
argue all you want about the value of a base on balls for a hitter as you see Rob Bowen has come in to run for Piazza. But Brian Giles has walked his last two times up and has scored both times. And on the day he's walked three times. Intentional walk. You know he's listed as being five foot ten. That's a stretch for Brian Giles. He's packed into about five eight five nine and you combine that small target at the plate when he stands up there he crouches a little bit and then throw in the fact that he has a tremendous eye at the plate and has a lot of patience. You talked about his younger brother Marcus neither of them were high draft picks. They were back end of the draft guys that had to earn everything they got in the minor leagues on their way up. Brian of course in the Pirates organization and Marcus with the Braves. Inside corner. I can picture one of the arguments that the uh, Giles brothers have. Hey who's got more power. Hey I got more power than you. Marcus come on. <laughs> I got more more major league home runs. They were both. Yeah but I got more juice than you do. They're come on. both all stars. <laughs> Brian would win the argument I'm tanner than you. <laughs> well Johnson now has walked Gonzalez. After giving up the double to Piazza. And the Marlins personal tormentor is at the plate and that brings Rick Kranitz the pitching coach out of the dugout. These are again areas that young players have to work on. It's a process as Borowski continues to, to loosen up. Remember we saw Josh last year appear in four games one of those as a start. But at 22 years old he is just learning and especially so not on the job as a starter he's learning as a relief pitcher right now. Right. Khalil Green with two home runs a solo shot a three run homer even his out was loud. And he fouls it back. Born in Hawaii. Key West High School. Bowen the pinch runner at second. One and one. You now he was the top college player, the Golden Spikes Award winner at Clemson in 2002. All he did was hit 480 with 26 home runs that year, his senior year. He has the record still, I believe, for career hits in ACC games. 398 hits. Bowen and Gonzalez aboard. And Johnson gets Khalil Green. A bright spot in the seventh. Otherwise, the Padres get a run and lead it by three. Out of all the car dealers on the web, only one connects you to the world's largest selection of cars and trucks, Marooney.com. Click Marooney.com to shop over 80,000 cars and trucks. And you can ask for Marooney's special internet price on every vehicle. Right, Dan Marino? Why run around? Get price and selection with one pass at Marooney.com. Marooney! Click Marooney.com or visit any of our 32 South Florida Marooney locations. NHL Center Ice brings you all of the action from around the league. Now you can watch the race to the Stanley Cup with NHL Center Ice and get games from outside your local area from now through the first two rounds of the Stanley Cup playoffs for only $49. Offer available from April 5th through May 17, 2006. Order today. When it comes to sports, we're on your team. To order, call 888-SPORTS-IN.
Marlins Baseball and FSM Florida is brought to you by Marooney. If you need a car, truck, or van, who are you going to call? Marooney. Dolphin Stadium, there's your score by inning. 6-3, Padres on top of the Marlins. Time now for our Direct TV game summary. Let's go with a little offense. Big two-out base hit, driving in a run by Josh Willingham in the first inning. They've got the Marlins on the scoreboard. This guy you're going to see way too much of, Khalil Green. He hit a home run earlier. That, a three-run shot in the sixth inning. Miguel Cabrera picks up an RBI with a smashing double into left field, driving home a run. And it's that guy, Willingham, again, the hammer. Another two-out base hit, driving in a run. Those are the good things. There have been some bad things in this game as well. A misplayed ball by Josh, a, a kick out in left field, a, a bad base running choice by Miguel Cabrera. As Clay Hensley comes in, the right-hander, to work for Bruce Bochy and the San Diego Padres. Bruce Bochy in his 12th year as manager of the Padres. One of the good guys in the game. And he turns it over to Hensley. We were talking about the back end of the Padre bullpen. Trevor Hoffman had a very good year last year, and certainly he's at the end of the line. Should Bochi call upon him? And if it's a, a three run ball game, you would expect him to. And Joe Girardi and the Marlins find themselves down three with three innings left and also a new catcher we saw Rob Bowen come in and pinch run for Mike Piazza he stays in the game and the third catcher that the Padres carry is the veteran Doug Mirabelli he's a Joe Girardi type guy isn't he Mirabelli yeah wasn't he uh, Tim Wakefield's personal catcher last year so we know he knows how to catch the knuckleball Olivo Abercrombie and the pitcher spot. And Hensley opens with a live fastball at the knees. It's 0 and 1. Hensley got knocked around against Colorado, but then again, who didn't on the Padres staff? In that series, the Padres gave up 32 runs at home in a three game series. The Rockies had 18 hits on Sunday. Breaking ball misses outside. Immediately following this one here, we'll have our postgame show in HD. The postgame show here from Dolphin Stadium. We'll show you highlights of the home opener and certainly we'll preview the rest of this three game series which continues tomorrow at one o'clock with Chris Young at six foot ten against Brian Moeller. One and two to Olivo. It's been a pretty good game behind the plate for Randy Marsh. Mainly because we haven't even noticed it. We haven't talked about it. Yep. Veteran umpire. The 2 2. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, says Angel Hernandez. Olivo's not real happy. Here's a look. Boy, that's a that's a call that every year you talk about goes it could go either way. It's one of those calls the umpires will tell you it's it's the hardest one they have too. Because did he break his wrists? No. Did he try to hold it up? Yes. Did the back cross home plate? Yes. Abercrombie takes down low. It's one and zero. Oh. It's a big out for Hensley. Chan Ho Park, who is in the Padre bullpen this year. They essentially swap salaries. Phil Nevin for Chan Ho Park. It's an expensive bullpen guy. Last year. Mm -hmm. 
Nevin's tenure had grown sour with the Padres. The Rangers, as if they needed another power bat, <laughs> figured they'd add Nevin, and, and the Padres were anxious to unload Park as well. But the Rangers were to the Padres. Chris Aguila's on deck. Abercrombie standing in, trying to get on base. And he does. Reggie draws a walk. Told you about the pitching matchup tomorrow. Mr. Moeller and Young. Well, we've got it for you live on FSN Florida in HD. It starts with Craig Minervini and Marlins on deck. That's at 12.30. You always have the best seat in the house. On the television home of the Marlins, FSN Florida and Sun Sports. Well, change of plan. Wes Helms emerges from the dugout and Aguila steps back in. Well, I think the choice was had Reggie Abercrombie not been on base, Joe Girardi would have gone with Chris Aguila. With a man on base, he sends a veteran up there. And Wes Helms has, certainly has the ability to hit one out for a two run shot. So he went with the, the more veteran hitter, a guy a little more likely to hit one out. Look at that career pinch hitting numbers. We've seen him pick up two pinch hits this year. Career pinch hitting average over 300. That is remarkable. Yeah, and last year he was the second best pinch hitter in all of baseball. He hit 381. A strike. Former Brave, former Brewer, his uncle, Tommy Helms, former big leaguer. Tommy Helms and Pete Rose came up uh, together uh, as infielders with the Cincinnati Reds. Breaking ball, fly ball, left field. Sledge is back and there, and he makes the catch at the wall. Two down. And Hanley Ramirez comes to the plate with two outs. It's been a busy day for Termel Sledge in left field. Uh, he, he's gotten his back very friendly with the wall and the scoreboard out there. A number of balls have sent him right to that warning track. Yeah, it's meet the Mikasukis out there. <laughs> yeah. That's the left field wall. <laughs> the triple opened the game. The double opened the sixth inning. Speed with Abercrombie at first. But there's two down. Well let's see we've seen. A couple of uh, triples. From Hanley Ramirez in his uh, brief major league career we've seen three doubles. And yes, he does have home run power. He also has a six game hitting streak to start this season. Talking to a couple members of the Padre coaching staff, they certainly with all the new faces with the Marlins were interested to see some of the guys. They knew all about Hanley Ramirez. One's peeling away and foul. Well, you think about it, the uh, the Padres, of course, train in Arizona. They play way out west, so it, they, there's not a lot of familiarity with the Padres and the Marlins, especially with the new look and all the young faces that the Marlins have. The familiarity comes in the minor leagues. I believe the Padres' Double A team is in Mobile. And of course the Marlins have a team in that Southern League. So they would know a little bit about Dan Ugla as well. Let's stop it. I already said that. Go there, Joe. 
Joe Girardi. Two and two. Ramirez stays alive. Girardi and Randy Marsh are having a dialogue right now. Hanley Ramirez goes down swinging, and the Marlins are done here in the seventh. San Diego on top of the Marlins, 6-3. Chevy makes the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And now they're making it easier to drive one. Down payment assistance from Chevy. You choose a Silverado or Colorado, Chevy will help you get in it. Down payment assistance. A better way to buy or lease a new Chevy pickup. Chevy, America's number one brand, America's number one value. Enough said. See your Southern Chevy dealers. Challenge and see why we're the fastest growing motorcycle brand in North America. Test ride a victory, take home a limited edition t shirt. With over 300 dealers nationwide, taking a test ride has never been easier. Dare to compare. Victory, the new American motorcycle. For opening day is your Marlins Battle of the Padres, Tuesday, April 11th at 4.05, when fans get a Marlins schedule magnet. Opening week continues on Wednesday. And on Thursday, bring a receipt for Benny Hanna and save up to 10 bucks at the box office. Call 1-877-MARLINS. Get hooked up. FSN has your Marlins covered all season long. Got him! See the up-and-coming young Marlins heat up the National League. Padres and Marlins tomorrow at 12.30 on FSN. Padres on top 6-3. Top of the eighth, Dolphin Stadium, where the Florida Marlins have their home opener. Joe Borowski has pitched in this ballpark before, but never as a Marlin. So one of the 14 on the 25-man roster that has appeared in a game on this field. Vinny Castilla. Josh Barfield to follow. And then the pitcher spot. Castilla, who's been through a couple of rebirths in his career. Remember when he was in Tampa Bay and, and that whole hit squad thing with Jose Canseco and Fred McGriff didn't work out? Many people felt he was finished. But he went to Atlanta and a lot of guys have had their careers revived in Atlanta as Castillas was then he went on to Colorado back there and led the National League in RBI. Last year a Washington National but they've got that fine young third baseman Ryan Zimmerman. So there was no place for Castilla. Yeah youth prevailed in Washington. Vinny Castilla the uh, all time leader amongst Mexican players in hits home runs doubles RBI's runs extra base hits and total bases that's the kind of career he's had. You noted you thought because of the scores that that series was played in Colorado <laughs> looking at Castilla's numbers I thought it was played initially in Colorado because Castilla had a good series and he always hits well at Coors Field in fact in, in 2004 when he hit 271 and, and had those 131 runs battered in. At Coors Field, he hit 321. Every place else, he hit 218. He went around, and Joe Borowski strikes out Vinny Castilla. Here's our Aquavelva, cool under pressure. Something about. 
Khalil Green. A solo home run to start things. And Khalil Green would add a three run shot off of Sergio Mitre. Aqua Velva keeps your face toned and fit. There is something about an Aqua Velva man. Barfield. Good play by the, the new Padres third base coach, Glenn Hoffman. You were talking about Trevor Hoffman, younger bro. Well, Glenn, who we saw the last six, seven years as the third base coach for the Dodgers, is now the San Diego Padres third base coach, former major league infielder. Padres made some changes on their coaching staff. Longtime coach Rob Picciolo no longer with the ball club. They brought Ty Waller up from their minor league system. As we watch Joe Borowski work, I think he, he really has something to prove this year. Last couple of years have been tough ones for him. A couple of years ago, he broke his right forearm, a bone in his forearm in spring training. Not have a good year in, in 04. Bounced around a couple of teams last year. And two years ago, he saved 33 games with the Cubs. So he wants to get back to that level. Well, the Marlins would love to add a veteran presence. We told you about Scott Linebrink. Not a lot of people know his name, but he's one of the best middle relievers or short relievers, I guess is a better way to put it with him in the business. That eighth inning setup man, he and Hoffman make quite a pair. 31,308. You know, pretty soon, Rich, we're going to get to the point that setup guys will have songs coming out of the bullpen. <laughs> Like an opening act. <laughs> well, we just came from New York where there was a, a controversy kind of created by the media, the talk shows there that Billy Wagner, who had been coming in to enter Sandman for all these years, it's the same song that Mariano Rivera uses with the Yankees. But their entrance and that song pales in comparison to the way. Hoffman comes in in San Diego. That's one of the great all time entrances. That's it's the way I come into the booth with Hell's Bells being played. But just the way they do that. I mean they don't ring the bell the start of that song until those doors fly open in uh, center field. It, it is a when you have a packed house at Petco and all of a sudden he comes into a game. It's a, it's impressive. Yeah it'll it'll put the goosebumps on you. It's fun. Three two pitch and Barfield draws a walk. Let's check in with Craig Minervini. Well, guys, you want to talk about fun? How about tomorrow's Marlins on deck? We'll see you at 12:30 here in Epicenter, Florida. Tommy Hutton will present inside the numbers. No hints coming, but it's going to be about batting average, I hear. Tommy, a mathematician, got his degree in the offseason. We'll also go around the horn with Joe Girardi. A few other surprises as well. Back to Rich and Professor Hutton. <laughs> Tommy went to Europe in the offseason. <laughs> he didn't go to school. Maybe you studied at one of those. Uh... Well, I had to. Uh, I had to figure out the euro, yeah. and I also had to work on Celsius. <laughs> Here's Mark Bellhorn. So Bellhorn, another veteran addition to this ball club. Barfield, we told you, had 20 stolen bases last year in the minor leagues. I think Bellhorn too, good insurance. For the youngster Barfield, Josh Barfield. Yeah, Mark Loretta is kind of a name we haven't mentioned. He heck of a player, and he was one of the guys that was traded away in the offseason. Pitch misses high. They also have Jeff Blum, a versatile bench guy. Quality guy can play all the infield spots and is a switch hitter. Eighth inning, 6-3. Padres on top. There goes Barfield. Bellhorn swings, pops it up. Olivo is back. We've talked a little bit, Rich, about the, the pitching rotation. And I know we have mentioned it a few times uh, on the road that the youngster Scott Olson, left-hander, 
will be pitching Saturday. Well he had his first outing uh, for Albuquerque last night and it was a ball game in Omaha. He had a no decision but he went six and a third innings gave up just five hits one run it was an unearned run and had three walks and five strikeouts. You can see Girardi jotting something down when he was a player Girardi much like Carlos Delgado did last year kept a notebook on on hitters that he faced and he continued it when he was next to Joe Torre last year as his bench coach and he still has some of those notes that he'll look into especially when he sees a veteran guy like Bellhorn. Well and also making note of the fact maybe that Barfield was running on a pitch they so you, you want to you want to have an idea which guys they might send which guys will be running which guys the other manager will hit and run with. Bellhorn pulls it foul. Padres on this road trip see the Marlins. They go to Atlanta and then they end the trip in Colorado. At least they're heading home when they stop in Denver. That usually works the other way for the Marlins. <laughs> They usually end out west. Barfield running again. Bellhorn fouls it at the plate. Or did he miss it? And Olivo didn't squeeze it. That's the case. It's a strikeout. And a stolen base for Josh Barfield. Marlins fans don't miss a second of the action. You can listen to every Marlins game live online with MLB.com game day audio. And catch games you missed on demand. Sign up now exclusively at FloridaMarlins.com. Dave Roberts. Oh for four at the top of the order. The design was to have Roberts in left field. With Mike Cameron in center field. But Cameron won't swing a bat until the ball club gets to Atlanta this weekend. He swings the bat here, and Roberts has extra bases, and the Padres have an extra run. A triple for Dave Roberts. The pitch before a good off speed pitch Borowski tried to come in on Roberts and with his speed once he got it into that right field corner there's a fastball he tried to get in wasn't in far enough once it gets into that corner and with his speed that was an easy triple for him this ballpark is a is a good what they say triples ballpark and we've seen Hanley Ramirez hit a triple today and Dave Roberts just hit one there. Jermell sledge the batter now with Roberts at third base. A run across. Sledge drove in the second run of the ball game for the Padres. That last pitch to Sledge was where Borowski wanted the pitch to Roberts. Inner part of the plate. He's falling behind three and one. Veteran Matt Hurgis. That one pulled foul as well. Cassidy and Linebrink. 
in the bullpen. Just in case the Padres push across another run and Bruce Bochy doesn't want to go the line brink Hoffman route. And so now with Brian Giles coming to the plate Rick Kranitz heads out to the mound. Giles has put one ball in play but he's been a major pest. He's walked three times and scored twice. You know not only does he have that great eye at the plate he's he's just a tick below a lifetime 300 hitter he's a lifetime 299 hitter. So when he does put it in play five times he's hit 300 or better. Yeah, he hit 301 last year. There's a strike. Giles actually came up in the Indians organization. I think I noted earlier he was a young pirate. And that was during the the days where the Indians were loaded. They were in their glory days in the early mid 90s. And there really wasn't room for Giles. And so they shipped him to Pittsburgh. And he found a home in Pittsburgh though the Pirates never could win even though they had Giles and a couple other stars. Jason Kendall behind the plate. And so the, he became too expensive for Pittsburgh and the Padres christening their new ballpark figured what better way to get a, a San Diego kid back here. And the Pirates uh, in the deal that sent him here sent Giles here acquired Oliver Perez uh, Talented young left handed pitcher and also Jason Bay. That's right. Who went on to be rookie of the year. You know you read biographical uh, biographical information about guys and in, in Giles bio. And it, it says he feels he's a better hitter when he's tan. Here's the two two pitch. Giles fouls it back. And the quote is Giles said you know it's just something I feel when I'm tan I'm a better hitter. And that, to me that's a quote that he, he threw out there just to see if it came back. It's one of those quotes he probably looked the next day in the paper and go that a guy wrote that. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> he said that, you know if I if I get a chance I'll go to the tanning booth just to get my stroke better. And then again he may be absolutely right in that. <laughs> he might be right on in that. I feel I broadcast better when when I have a nice tan. You and you are well tanned. You're not George Hamilton like, but you're you're okay. That one misses, and Giles is aboard. And now the bases are loaded. And now we'll get a look first at Joe Girardi. In a game that is starting to get away from the Marlins here in the top of the eighth inning. Joe Girardi is going to make a change. Here comes Herges. Exit Borowski. Time now for our Marooney. Call to the bullpen. When you need a car, truck or van, who are you going to call? Marooney! When you think Panthers hockey, think the Cup. And when you think real estate, think Century 21 Tennis Realty, South Florida's winning team. Whether buying or selling, your home is the most important investment you have, and experience counts. For over 25 years, the tennis team offers full service at competitive prices. So call the pros at Century 21 Tennis Realty today. Hi, I'm Bob Tennis. When you're ready to buy or sell, come join the winning team at Tennis Realty. Century 21 Tennis Realty, proud sponsor of Florida Panthers hockey. Out of all the car dealers on the web, only one connects you to the world's largest selection of cars and trucks, Marooney.com. Click Marooney.com to shop over 80,000 cars and trucks. And you can ask for Marooney's special internet price on every vehicle. Right, Dan Marino? Why run around? Get price and selection with one pass at Marooney.com. Marooney. .com. Marooney. 
Marooney! Click Marooney.com or visit any of our 32 South Florida Marooney locations. One day. It's Macy's One Day Sale going on now. Look for the lowest prices of the season plus savings and values throughout the store. Yeah. Great morning specials till noon. And get an extra 40 to 50% off clearance. Yeah. Also save 50% on Style & Company. Yeah. Almost everything for kids is 50% off. Yeah. Kitchen Electric's your choice, $27.99. But you better hurry. Macy's Way to Shop. Yeah. Joe Borowski with a brief stay on the mound. He struck out two, but he walked three. And here is Herges now to face Rob Bowen. The Padres claimed him off waivers from the Detroit Tigers. And Hurd just throws a strike. Have to start him off that way. No room to put Bowen with the bases loaded. Matt Hurd just pitched a nice inning the other day in New York. Padres have pushed across another run and still have Roberts who is tripled sledge who walked and Giles who walked for the 12th time in this game it seems four walks for Giles. Oh and two. Your description of Borowski in that this is a year he's trying to bounce back kind of figures in with Hurgis as well. Another veteran right hander who's had success in the big leagues, trying to prove that he still belongs. That was up, but not by much. And I think a guy who's battled uh, shoulder problems and arm problems to prove that he's healthy as well. 2 2 pitch. Oh. Well, the dialogue is going to continue, I suspect. How can he take that pitch with two strikes? That's what I want to know. The 3 2. Little looper, and that's going to fall. The Padres are going to get a couple more. Willingham up with it. Two runs across. And San Diego has busted this one wide open. It's 9 3. Bowen with a two run single. Well, that's what happens when you have that close pitch that's taken for a ball. Now the hitter knows that he's going to see a fastball and he's going to see a fastball that's going to have to have more of the plate. So he's going to get a very good pitch to hit. Here's Gonzalez, who's 0 for 3. Padres have done their damage on 10 hits. In the air, left center, Willingham squeezes it. Three more runs for the Padres. As we go to the bottom of the eighth, San Diego now leads it 9 3. It just 
feels better with an Aqua Velva man. Introducing Aqua Velva Ice Balm Aftershave. Alcohol free, vitamin infused. Skin care from A to V. NHL Center Ice brings you all of the action from around the league. Now you can watch the race to the Stanley Cup with NHL Center Ice and get games from outside your local area from now through the first two rounds of the Stanley Cup playoffs for only $49. Offer available from April 5th through May 17, 2006. Order today. When it comes to sports, we're on your team. To order, call 888-SPORTS-IN. Home opener started out okay for the Marlins, but it has turned sour along with Tommy Hutton, Craig Minervini, Rich Waltz with you. The Padres keep adding on. Three runs in the sixth, a run in the seventh, three more in the eighth. And even in high definition, the Padres have executed, and now they go deeper into their bullpen. And Scott Cassidy comes in the game as a right hander with with not a lot of time at the big league level. He's 30 years of age so he's been around. He signed back in in 1998. And as you pointed out had the game stayed a 6 3 game. Uh, we would probably have seen line brink and had it stayed in that safe situation Trevor Hoffman. But now Bruce Bochy is going to get some innings for Scott Cassidy. He hasn't had a uh, save situation for Hoffman yet this year. Hermita singled his last at bat. Hermita Cabrera Jacobs. It's hard to imagine this about a 9 3 game. For me to take the strike, but this game turned on a couple of key plays, or actually misplays by the Marlins on the bases and in the field. Hermita swings and misses. Miguel Cabrera getting caught at second in that line drive double play, even though the Marlins did score a run in that inning. That back in the sixth, Hermita goes down. One down. Our Chevy box score in game. Chevy, America's number one brand, America's number one value. See your Southern Chevy dealers. Khalil Green's the big line. Those two homers accounting for the first four of the first five runs. And for the Marlins, Josh Willingham, two for three. Here is Cabrera, who's hit it hard twice. Cabrera, an RBI double off the base of the wall in left field. Miguel pops that one up. Gonzalez. Just for a look. Andres won the West last year with a record that was five games worse than their record the previous year when they finished in third place. Well, I remember everybody following the uh, National League West last year wondering if the winner would be over 500 and uh, they just were by a couple of games.
The West is an interesting division. Colorado looks a lot better. And as the Padres observed, the young kids that took their lumps the last couple of years all of a sudden are a little bit older and a little bit better. With the Giants, that's a tough team to figure out with the whole bonds or no bonds situation. And a very old team still. No, they they could have an outfield. They could play an outfield. They won't do this every day. That it, it averages 40 years of age with Finley and Bonds in a loop. <laughs> Cabrera sprays it to right field, but Giles is there. Tonight on FSN Florida, the Florida Panthers and the Maple Leafs of Toronto face off at 7.30. Panthers hockey live tonight, 7.30 on FSN Florida. You know, I guess the question I have uh, promoing that Panthers game is how in the world is Craig Minervini going to get up to Toronto so quickly? That's a good question. Maybe his, his private jet, perhaps. I know he leases that from the Donald every once in a while. <laughs> Jacobs is 0 for 3. It was Jacobs who hit the line drive that Cabrera was caught off guard and doubled off at second in the sixth inning. The Marlins did get two runs in that inning. But might have been able to squeeze out more. Well, I think if you look at the main opportunities in this game, even in the first inning with the leadoff triple, the Marlins had an opportunity, and then there was a walk to Cabrera to score more than just the one run. They were fortunate to get that two out base hit by Josh Willingham. And, and then in the sixth inning, yeah, they scored two runs. Uh, could have easily, they started the inning with three straight hits. Double, single, and double. They could have scored more than the two runs. So they haven't made the most of the opportunities that they've had. That one fouled back. And then back in the seventh inning, when the Padres continued to add on. Mike Piazza's double in the corner was kicked by Josh Willingham, which allowed Brian Giles to score all the way from first. Cassidy misses outside. The Dodgers are a team that uh, has tried to piece themselves back together. And of course Arizona with the departure of Troy Gloss. The Dodgers will be another interesting team to watch. Of course Gagne now is going to miss probably half the year. And as always seems like when you talk about the Dodgers they need to have J.D. Drew healthy. You know Jeff Kent's going to do what he does best. Hit drive in runs. Down goes Jacobs. Down go the Marlins in the eighth. San Diego on top, 9 3. Chevy makes the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And now they're making it easier to drive one. Down payment assistance from Chevy. You choose a Silverado or Colorado, Chevy will help you get in it. Down payment assistance. A better way to buy or lease a new Chevy pickup. Chevy, America's number one brand, America's number one value. Enough said. See your Southern Chevy dealers. Good news. I got promoted. Better news. I got DirecTV. My new office has a clear view for miles. My DirecTV has 155 crystal clear channels. I have a $1,700 expense account. I have over 1,700 movies every month. I meet with the CEO every Friday. I meet the Fockers whenever I want. I just got an assistant. I just got three months of HBO, Star, Showtime, and Cinemax for free. Can you give me the number for DirecTV? No. 
I don't think she heard me. Get over 155 channels for $29.99 a month. That's half the price of cable. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. The thing is, everyone wants to save money on their car insurance. You ask if they want a free Geico quote, it's like asking if they want free oh, pie and chips. Of course they want free pie and chips. It's pie with chips for free. But pie and chips, uh, you can get them anywhere. Geico quotes made from scratch, just for you. Only at geico.com. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Panthers hockey is only on FSN Florida. The Panthers are fired up and ready to take on the NHL as they cross the border to battle the Leafs. Tonight at 7.30 on FSN Florida. Ninth inning, Padres on top 9-3. Hope you're making plans to come out to the ballpark the rest of the week. Tomorrow and on Thursday, 1 o'clock starts. 7.30 on Friday night, then afternoon games on Saturday and Sunday. Eric Reed, please welcome him to the telecast. He's out in center field. Abercrombie moves over to right field. So on the double switch, Franklin Herman will occupy Jeremy Hermita's spot. Yeah, we saw this hard thrower who was a, a late addition to the Marlins roster come in in a game and feature a 95-mile-an-hour fastball and a good splitter. Franklin Herman and Khalil Green fouls it off. Claimed off waivers on April 4th, so just before the start of the season, and we saw him pitch a nice inning in Houston. Has major league experience with the Detroit Tigers. He was originally an, an Oakland athletic coming up in their farm system. And he was part of a three team deal between the Tigers the A's and the Yankees. Which sent Jeff Weaver from Detroit to New York Ted Lilly from New York to Oakland. Herman came to Oakland along with. Lilly. And the Tigers got a young right hander named Jeremy Bonderman, who has turned out pretty good for the Tigers organization. And Herman went from the A's organization to the Tigers organization, along with Carlos Pena in that deal. Khalil Green. The thorn in the Marlins side today. Solo homer, three run homer, has hit four this season. And he rips that one foul. Well, the big man, Jim Tomey, now with the White Sox, hit his fourth last night. Albert Poolholz has four, hit an absolute monster shot. Poolholz did. Adam Dunn with four. Poolholz in the new ballpark, New Bush Stadium in St. Louis, crushed one about 450. In their home opener yesterday. Did you see who hit the first home run in that ballpark's history? It was Mark Mulder. Mark Mulder pitched eight innings and went two for three with a home run. Had quite a day. Lance Berkman and Preston Wilson with four home runs as well. Two two pitch. 95 on the gun and green goes down and Derek Lee of the Cubs with three home runs but a nice new contract extension. Yeah. Khalil, right. Khalil Green wasn't going to catch up to that 95 mile an hour heater. You throw that and then mix in that splitter that's how you can pitch up and down you hear a lot of pitchers have to work the corners of the plate when you have that overpowering fastball and a split finger that dives down you can work up and down in the strike zone. We'll have to check with uh, with John Silverman down and the equipment manager of the Marlins but Franklin Herman's hat size appears to be Bruce Bochy like Bochy has I think the, the largest hat size in baseball 
He does. He will. He will admit that. But Herman's got to be up there as well. Herman, a little more hair though than than Boach. He's Boach in his twelfth year as the Padres manager. When he was a player, used to keep his helmet because if he got traded, he, he knew that other team would have trouble finding one. They just spray paint it the color of the new team, <laughs> put the logo on. It. Herman. Throws that one by Vinny Castilla. I remember Ramon Castro put his helmet over Juan Pierre's helmet, and it fit with plenty of room to spare. <laughs> if you've ever been to the Big A in Anaheim, they have those huge helmets in the front. Those are the largest ones that New Era makes. And yes, they are sponsored by New Era in Anaheim. That's a very low strike that Herman gets, and Castillo is not happy about. That was that split finger. You saw the bottom fall out of it. Fell out of low. Vinny certainly has a pretty good beef, but Franklin Herman will take it. And Joe Girardi's probably thinking right now, too little, too late. Ooh, Barfield fouled that right off of Randy Marsh. Can you picture the top of one of those rounded trash cans that has the little door that opens up? Kind of looks like a helmet. Mm -hmm. One year, you know, there's something about catchers. All these guys we're talking about are catchers. Tim McCarver. The, the clubhouse guy put a big piece of tape with McCarver on it and put it in his locker. <laughs> so you got to have fun. How did McCarver take it? He had fun Good. because the guy was a clubhouse guy was in St. Louis actually that uh, everybody loved. So we had fun with him. Barfield three for three. Nothing but uh, good things. In the future, many think for this young second baseman. Now we could be seeing uh, a Giles uh, brother situation. I was told that uh, Josh Barfield's younger brother, Jeremy Barfield, is a senior in high school in the Houston area. That's where his dad, Jesse, and their family lives, and is expected to be a first rounder. He's about 6'5, he's a power hitter. Herman flips on over in time. And Franklin Herman works a one, two, three inning. The Marlins are down to their final three outs. We head to the bottom of the ninth inning. They finally got Khalil Green out. Nine three Padres. Just sign your name and get a great lease on any new Lincoln or Mercury during our signature sales event. Lease Mariner now with zero first month's payment, zero down, and zero cash due at signing for just $2.79 a month. Hurry, offer ends soon. So let's mix. Hey, want to party over at our house? Yes! Great, we'll play some games. Grab a bite to eat. Oh, invite your friends. We have plenty of room. And tell them to bring a bathing suit. <laughs> Mikasuki Resort and Gaming. You bet you're going to have a great time. At Geico.com, you can handle all your car insurance needs online. It's so easy, a caveman could do it. <laughs> Seriously, we apologize. We had no idea you guys were still around. Yeah, next time maybe do a little research. <laughs> Gentlemen, are we ready to order? I'll have the roast duck with the mango salsa. I don't have much of an appetite, thank you. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Just sign your name and get a great lease on any new Lincoln or Mercury during our signature sales event. Lease Milan now with zero first month's payment, zero down, and zero cash due at signing for just $2.56 a month. Hurry, offer ends soon. Marlins Baseball and FSM Florida has been brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher Gatorade. 
It's in Major League Baseball. Is it in you? By Rico, move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. And by Valero, the energy to take you anywhere. Nine three Padres. Bottom nine. And Scott Cassidy stays on. Josh Willingham, Dan Ugla, and Miguel Olivo scheduled. Cassidy had a pretty good inning in the eighth inning, couple of strikeouts. Woody Williams started, Alan Embry, Clay Hensley, and now Cassidy. Williams making his first start. High pop up off the bat of Willingham. Gonzalez coming down. And right now it looks like uh, Woody Williams, the veteran, will pick up his 113th career win. Padres are hoping that Sean Estes recovers. They're starting rotation hurt. Juan Brasselton will see him on Sunday. And the big six foot ten Chris Young is tomorrow. Here's Ugla. Pops it up. It'll be interesting to watch Young in San Diego to see if his fortunes turn around a bit. Going from one of the best hitting ballparks in the game. At, uh, in Arlington to one of the better pitching parks and actually had a pretty good year mm -hmm. uh, in Texas won 12 games ERA was in the fours. Hey, hey. Ugla takes a breaking ball for a strike. You know it's almost with the designated hitter if you have an earned run average in a in a hitters ballpark that's in the fours done a pretty good job. Yeah absolutely. Ugly in this one has popped out a couple times and flied out and he hits the ball in the air again. Dave Roberts. Two down. One of the things that uh, Dan Ugla and, and some others on the ball club are going to have to work on. Keep that ball on the ground. This is a very fast infield. The grass in the outfield is swift and it's a spacious park so the, the high fly balls and pop flies more than likely are going to turn into outs as opposed to home runs. Bottom of the order has been quiet. Uglo 0 for 4. Olivo is 0 for 3. Abercrombie was 0 for 2 with a walk. takes inside the gray uniforms of the Padres are just a little bit different than the traditional gray it's sort of that sandstone color that I guess the uh, some of the cliffs around San Diego might have but much more soothing and beautiful than the the early 70s brown brown and yellow Padre uniforms <laughs> Nate Colbert era the Nate Colbert era and one foul back the early Ozzy Smith era Gene Richards now you're now you're getting into the Gene tennis was there Gene me. tennis yeah Cy Young Award winner Randy Jones Gaylord Perry was a Padre. Of course, Gaylord Perry was just about everything. Of course, that was at an era. Remember the uh, remember the Cleveland Indians had like softball uh, uniforms. They were red. I remember the Giants had an all orange outfit yeah. back when Jack Clark was there. Olivo fouls it back. Yeah, that was uh, the anything goes era. What's the worst uniform you wore? You had some classy unis to wear. I mean, the, the Phillies. The early Phillies had the had the stripes, the pinstripes. But the blue, the road one, was that uh, powder blue color. That was nice. Yeah. 
ones high. First uniform I ever had that had a uh, that didn't button up. It had a zipper. It never had a top button. Three two pitches foul back. So when Greg Luzinski let it out and really hit one a long way, they, you know, he unzippered it, <laughs> unbuttoned it, his top button, and you know, let it fly. Greg Luzinski and Mike Schmidt, they just lowered that zipper a little bit. Here is <laughs> the three-two, and Olivo strikes out, and a disappointing home opener for the Marlins, indeed. Scott Cassidy finishes it off. Woody Williams is going to get the win in this one in a ball game that got away from the Marlins in the middle innings. Khalil Green provided the early power with a solo home run back in the early part of the ball game and then a big three run blast in the sixth inning. And the young shortstop of the Padres continues to blossom. He's homered against every team he's faced this year. This being the third, and he's got four on the season. And Joe Girardi and Rick Kranitz talk it over as night falls on South Florida. Well, we've talked about it on numerous occasions. Uh, the, the Marlins can't make mistakes. You're going to have the the errors that are made. Those you can't really avoid. But the mental stuff, the, the overthrowing of a cutoff man, the, the being uh, just doubled off on a play that was right in front of you when you were losing. You can't have things like that happen in order to win games. Now you talked about Khalil Green. This guy's just been on fire, and I agree with you. I think he's a, a young star in the making. He has unbelievable talent, and we saw it demonstrated today. A low fastball, then a high fastball. The, the second home run, he hit a three-run shot, and he just uh, really put a damper on the Marlins' home opener with his four RBI game. And that collective sigh of relief you hear coming from the uh, Padres dugout is after they were swept from the uh, Colorado Rockies at Petco. But the Padres go on the road and they spoil the Marlins home opener. 9 3 the final. That'll do it for Marlins baseball. Our game broadcast done. Khalil Green saw to that. And the Padres added on and added on. And San Diego gets game one of this three game series. Tomorrow in HD, we started with Marlins on deck. At 12:30, and at 1 o'clock, the Marlins and the Padres will play Game Two. Stick around; our post-game show from Dolphin Stadium is next.